about the exterior right now. Here's the deal. So our fourplex is kind of a big brick box and four down from us are four more big brick boxes. And right, actually, right next to us. Yeah, right so next to us. Right in a row. There's yeah. five, five of the exact same units right in a row. And across the street there's even one. Right. We want ours to stand out. They're gonna know who we're, who we're talking about if they watch this, but we were told by a wise developer that people buy homes very much based on emotion. It's not just a place with four walls around you, it's something that you really care about. We were just discussing how it would be pretty cool if we painted our house so it didn't look like the other four plexus next to us. Naturally, I have some reservations about painting brick because, especially in this town, there are a few uh, there are a few homes and buildings that are painted brick. But for the most part, I, I would say like in the 90 percentile, all the brick is all natural. Because I have a successful realtor on our side who I trust and who invests themselves, and because I just see it, you know, ours looks just like everyone else's. Um, even the woman who owns a home next to ours was like, do you want to make money or do you want your house to be pretty? And quite honestly, Nick and I agreed when we got into this. Both? We want both. <laughs> I was actually talking to our baller business coach. Um, I'm going to give her a shout out, Allison Task. Hi, Allison. Hi. If you need a business coach, this woman is ridiculous. Um, but she sent me, us, a gift in the mail, and it was a children's book called The Big Orange Splot. I hope I got that title right. But the premise of the whole book is that this guy lives on a street with all the houses that look the same. And one day a bird flies by and drops a big orange paint can on his roof. And all of his neighbors are like, you know, you gotta paint it back so it matches all of our houses. And instead of doing that, he paints it so that his dreams are reflected on the home. And neighbors come by and they're like, why did you do that? And he explains it and so then that neighbor gets on his team. And then more neighbors come by, like, wait, now both of you have houses that don't look like ours. What are we gonna do? And at the end of the book, everyone paints their houses to look like who they are. I think the saying is like, my house is me and I am my house. But she was like, you gotta do you, essentially. And as long as it works in the numbers. So we're gonna do it. So we're gonna do it. Long story short. We were doing our research and curb appeal right now is you're getting more out of your investment in curb appeal than really anything else, even over kitchens, which is Some people are saying, crazy. yeah. Honestly, we're going to have this property for hopefully decades. Our whole life. So I'm not really worried about resale at this point. Yeah, um, yeah. I do want to increase the value of the home. Of course. Pull out that equity and of course. invest in another. So as you can see, it's not painted yet. We're going to put some samples up on this home. White is not just white. There are different shades of white, and it's really important that we get this right. Yeah. So we don't want to do a stark, uh, bright white. No, we want to do something that's antique, a little warm. Okay. We really want your help and we hope that you get excited to jump on board and help us pick out this paint color. Okay guys, so we're going to put these paint samples on the house and we need your help to decide too, so let us know what you think. This first one is Sherwin-Williams Shoji. Alright, don't get scared now. Nick and Sarah. So our next color is called Aesthetic White by Sherwin Williams. Our last sample is Alabaster White. Okay, so we have our three samples up. We're going to give them some time to dry and take their true color and then we'll come back and see what the results are. <laughs> 